Hi, this is Shelby with Shallot's Personal Chef Service and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to do a dessert. This is probably one of my all-time favorite desserts in the world. Uh, what's nice about this is that we're going to present it as a Passover dessert, but I'm also going to tell you how it can be done as a traditional dessert as well during the rest of the year. So without further ado, let me present you my chocolate profiteroles or chocolate eclairs as they're also known. Now this one is filled with a custard cream, egg custard. Uh, you can also do ice cream, you can do whipped cream, you can add a little bit of chopped berries or bananas into your custard if you wish. I've even done sort of a wacky fusion theme one time when I did a Chinese dinner party where I filled the shells with peppermint ice cream and then crunched up starlight mints on the top. They were amazing. What's great about this dish is most of it can be done ahead of time. The shells can actually be frozen and pulled out when you're ready to use them. So let's get going. This is a three part recipe. I'm gonna present the shells, the custard and the chocolate. So let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do are the profiterole shells. This is a classic French pastry called a choux pastry. We start off with a cup of water, a cup of butter or margarine, and a little bit of salt. We bring it to a subtle boil as we have here. And then what we do is we dump in, and this is the choux technique, we dump in either our flour, or in this case, we're gonna be using the matzah cake meal. We dump it in all at once. I'm gonna turn the heat off my burner, and I'm gonna give it a good whisking. And as you see, it thickens up very quickly. You want to incorporate all, all the flour that you have in here, and it almost forms a ball. This is technically a roux, as you would make it for a white sauce or a thickening agent. This actually is the crust of our batter. Now, you'll apol I apologize because I'm going to give this a little bang here. see that there is some that has not been incorporated, so let's just mix that up a little bit better. And there you go. Now the next part of this, I'm going to actually remove it off the heat. Once again, a little knock here. And at this point, we're going to add four whole eggs but each one is added on its own, beaten until it's well incorporated, and then we add it back. Now, I'm sure grandma used a beater and all her muscles after incorporating each one. I use a hand mixer, easier and faster. So for brevity, I'm just gonna incorporate one of the four eggs to give you an idea. Now, after just the one egg, it is gonna look kind of piecey, but trust me on this, by the time you get the four eggs incorporated, you will have a cohesive batter. So here is my one egg. I'm gonna put it in. My hand mixer. take it off the heat. You don't want that egg to touch the bottom and start to scramble. And as I said before, it will look PC at this point, but by the time you add in your other three eggs, I think you're going to find a nice cohesive batter. So once again, through my famous magic television act, let me show you what this batter is going to look like. What's nice is like I did, this batter can be made ahead of time. It is very, very thick. If you can get 
get an idea of what it is, let's see if I can roll it down and show you. Very, very thick consistency. Now, because we're using the matzo meal, it is a little darker. If you're gonna use all-purpose flour, this dough is gonna be a little bit lighter in color. Now, what I like to do is put it in a plastic Ziploc baggie. You can also put it in a piping bag if you would prefer to do that. You're gonna snip the bottom and pipe out your shapes. Now, wouldn't you know, I have the one brand of plastic baggies, apparently, that don't have a point can't snip them so uh, that's just not going to work so i'm going to just use the spoon method which i like just as well you're going to have a parchment lined baking sheet and with a regular tablespoon i like these small now you can do these whatever shape you like you can be very creative with these but I do like these small, petite, I think they're pretty on a plate. Uh, you can serve several as a, as a portion. Uh, let you know my hands have been thoroughly washed and I'm just going to spoon out some of the batter onto my parchment paper. Now, if you're making this immediately after doing it, obviously the batter is gonna be warmer this one was made yesterday so and put in the fridge so the batter is a little colder you do not and i and i mean this do not smush these down you want to keep them as fluffy as you can if they have any craggly edges then you can take a little bit of water on your fingertips and smooth it down now with the regular flour, these are going to really puff up. With the matzo meal flour, they don't rise as much, which of course makes sense. In Passover, our, our products are not leavened, so we do not have um, as, as much of the uh, rising as they normally would. So I'm just going to do three for right now. Let me give my fingers a quick rinse. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in a 450 oven for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna reduce the heat to three and a quarter, and they're gonna cook about another 12 to 15 minutes. Now, because there's so much water in this dough during those first 15 minutes, that's when they puff up, and then during the next 15 minutes is when they ground. So as you see, I haven't really even smoothed them out. I've just kind of left them as they do, as they uh, come right off the spoon. And here we have three that have already been baked. These freeze beautifully, by the way. So at this point, if you wanna freeze these on a baking sheet, and then pop them in a Ziploc for later use, that's perfect. So I'm gonna just keep these over here until we're ready to fill them. The next part of our recipe is gonna be our pastry cream. And for our pastry cream, we're going to be using one I'm even going to cheat here one third cup of sugar and two to three two to three tablespoons of either cornstarch or in this case for Passover I'm using the potato starch they're really interchangeable for this I've got six egg yolks which have already been cracked if you're not good at separating eggs by the end of this recipe you'll be perfect I'm going to put this over a low heat. Now, I'm not gonna use a double boiler on this. I'm gonna just use a low heat. However, if you're concerned that you're gonna overcook those eggs, then by all means, do a double boiler, which we're gonna discuss in a minute or two. So we're gonna give this a good stir. Incorporate it in. We're gonna add our two cups of milk. 
If you prefer to use a plant-based milk, that's fine too. The trick to this part is low and slow. You do not want the eggs to start to cook and get little bumps. So low and slow. So after this comes to a boil, it will start to thicken and it will start to thicken quickly. So I'm not gonna work you through the whole process here. I'm gonna turn it off and show you the finished product. Now, once this begins to cool, to cool, you're gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And it is absolutely delicious. You're gonna to wanna to lick it off the spoon. So once again, let's push this back. I'm gonna show you. Now, once this is cooked, put it in a bowl. And the way we make a pudding, you put a little bit of wax paper on the top so you don't get the skin on the top. And you end up with a luscious, and I mean luscious, vanilla custard. Once again, let's move this to the area where we're going to need it for our stuffing. And then the last part of the recipe is gonna be our glaze. We're gonna start off with one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Pardon me here. And to that, I have a stick of butter that is already mixed in here. We're going to add approximately two to three tablespoons of milk. And yeah, I'd probably measure. If you prefer, once again, you can use a plant-based milk or in the ones that I made over there, I actually put in a little bit of heavy cream. I figured, oh, what the heck. I also like to add a little bit of vanilla because vanilla just seems to wake chocolate up. Or if you'd like, you can put in a little bit of coffee granules as well. We're gonna put this in what is a double boiler. And now let's go to the one that I've already got started for you. Now, you don't need to purchase a fancy double boiler. This is just a pot inside a pot. The trick here, is you have to be careful. Third, your, fill your bottom pot about a third with water. You don't want water jumping into the chocolate mixture because it'll seize it up uh, and chocolate gets hard that way. So once again, just like with the custard, we're gonna go low and slow. After I have everything in here, I leave it alone. I don't sit and stir it. It doesn't need to be stirred. Wait until your chocolate chips completely melt, then go ahead and give it one stir, two stir, fine, it'll be well incorporated at that point. So let's move this over to our work area. Obviously it's been sitting in hot water, we want to be very careful. And you have a rich, yummy chocolate. Now, if I'm not doing this for Passover, then I might add a little bit of corn syrup into the chocolate mix. It gives it a beautiful consistency and it makes it shiny. So here we are. Let's fill these puppies. Gonna take them. I just give them a slice. Very easy. If you wanna try injecting them with a hypodermic, that's up to you. Then we're going to take some of our luscious cream and there is enough custard here for this recipe. You won't have to worry about not having enough custard. Spoon it in as artfully as you can. Mm, let's give this chocolate a lovely stir. Get it nice and smooth. And let's just get a little wax paper underneath here. And we're gonna glaze the top. And if it runs down the side, mm, that's fine too. Okay, and that is it. I usually put them in the fridge. 
I usually put them in the fridge. It will help harden this chocolate. It's great. You can make these ahead of time for a dinner party. And the best part about this whole recipe is when you're done and nobody's looking, you take a little bit of the custard and a little bit of the chocolate and you go like this. Oh, amazing. So thanks for joining me. I will post the ingredients on my Facebook and bon appetit.